All right, hello everyone. N2CUA, Randy here. Um, I was working a little more with the poor man's TDR on uh, the Rigel DS1102E oscilloscope, and I was wondering the other day um, if there was a way for the scope to measure the difference in time between the two waveforms instead of using cursors and trying to manually adjust them and hopefully in the right place and measuring it that way. <coughs> seemed like with a scope of this caliber uh, you should be able to do that. And interestingly enough there is. Um, just a quick um, review uh, for those of you who may or may not have watched any of the other poor man TDRs. Um, all of mine are based on uh, LW2AEW's videos, which you might want to watch if you've never seen them before. But basically, in my case, what we've done is fed a signal from a, a function generator square wave. It's uh, one kilohertz, basically, um, into channel one. And it goes out that through a length of coax. In my case, it's like 53 feet, I believe, is what I've got it marked as. And it comes back into channel two with a termination. Thank you, L. Only one termination. And um, so what we're measuring here and what we're seeing in the screen between channel 1, which is the original signal, and channel 2 is the delay of that signal across that coax because of the uh, velocity factor of the coax slows that signal down. So we get a, a delay across, uh, across the coax. And then according to um, some theory and formulas, you can take that time difference and do some math and come up with uh, the length in feet um, for the coax. So, um, I can show you the math really quick as well, but I first want to do the measurement here. So on the uh, Rigel DS1102E oscilloscope, uh, what you have to do is press measure, and then go down to time, and you can adjust the uh, menu down with the encoder knob here, down to, it has some um, delay, for the rise time and delay for the fall time. And we're looking at the rise time here, so we want to do delay for the rise time. And hit that. And then if you notice down here in the bottom left, it says delay A equals 83, most toggling between 82 and 83 nanoseconds. <coughs> so, keeping that in mind. Oh, and one thing too I just wanted to mention was that um, when Al does his, he does it um, using just channel one. And so, in his video, you're seeing the uh, wave go down the coax and then be reflected back. And as you're seeing that, on just one channel, one waveform. Um, but that's a, a round trip thing. It's going down and coming back. So, in his case, the times are basically double my times because you've got that trip in both directions. In my case, we're going um, from the generator right through the coax to channel two. So there's no, um, you know, reflection. There's no. Uh, trip back down the coax, as it were, no reflected waves. Um, and so the time is half of what he would normally show on his. Okay, so the math on that is basically this. Um, they say that the uh, free space um, speed of um, uh, the electrical signal is 11.8 inches per nanosecond. And with a velocity factor, in my case, of this coax is RG8, I believe is um, 0.67 so the speed in coax keeping that in mind is 7.79 inches per nanosecond so in that case the length of the coax would equal 7.79 inches per nanosecond times the number of nanoseconds which in my case is 80 to 83 it's toggling around there um, and then that would give you the number of inches so then we divide that by 12 and then you get the number of feet so I come up with 53.232 feet which is pretty close to 53 so <clears throat> there you have it. Really quick one for you. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Again, there's uh, two or three videos on my um, channel doing with Poor Man's TDR. And then you'd also want to go, if you've not seen this before at all, go watch um, Al's W2AEW's. He um, explains it very well and shows you uh, another method to do the same thing, basically. And this method works all right as long as you've got a long enough piece of coax to hand, <coughs> you can get to both ends. But what if you can't? I mean, what if the coax is, you know, 100 feet long and is buried in PVC pipe across your front yard? You can't exactly get to the other end. So then you'd want to use the uh, method uh, that Al has where you would um, send a 
pulse down the cable and look and see what happens to the reflections and so on and be able to tell if there's anything wrong with the coax or there's any opens or shorts or impedance changes to some degree so there you have it um, hope you enjoyed seven threes and uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe if you're enjoying the videos um, I do uh, I need that presence there hopefully we'll be able to drum up some more um, equipment from uh, folks who want to have reviews or uh, so on so if I can get uh, some more pieces of equipment in uh, to do the reviews on everybody wins I get equipment they get advertising and you get more videos with uh, hopefully educational information so seven threes and we'll see you next time